It's not, it's not that I'm, I don't want friends. I don't. I'm talking about, I, I do want friends. But the thing is, I desire to do what's pleasing to the Lord even more than having friends. And the Bible tells us friendship with the world is enmity with God. So you got to choose your friends wisely. You understand? You really do. And the thing about having friends, you, you find yourself flocking to the same group. One thing about when you got another friends, you you more friendly to many other people. I'm just being, he said, in order to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. We live in a world where cliques is the way to go. I know they'd be like, well, Jesus had a clique. Yeah, he did. Had a thousand to start with. Then he dropped down to 11. And then when uh, it came time for him to go to the cross, they left him. You know, and a lot of people are going to leave you. But it was meant for them to leave because it's meant for Christ to suffer by himself. You know, uh, somebody asked, proposed the question, why wasn't Judas forgiven? Because God knew Judas' heart. Jesus knew Judas' heart and knew what he was about from the beginning. Sometimes God will allow certain people to hang around you and he know they're against you. It is what it is. And you as a Christian are taught to look past it. You know, I have, I have ministered to people who I knew hate me. Sat on the porch and talked about God with them. Spread the gospel with them. And then somebody else come to me. And, it, and I know it's true. I don't believe it every time, but I know it's true in this case. Hey, y'all, uh, so-and-so don't like you at all. Every time, all right, so be it. This, how my, this is my saying. As long as you ain't saying it to me, I could care less. But don't disrespect me in my face. Don't try it. I don't care what you say about my hammer back. Respect me in my presence. I don't demand respect. I don't care. That's cowardly to me. And that's, that shows you how people flip-flop around certain people. Take care of it. People will flip-flop on you. Be right in your face. You know, man, shoot, I, I just, I, I'm glad I got a friend like you. So glad, so happy. Man, you helped me out. Brown knows you the deal. Then when you gone, I don't like that son of a gun. Get friends. But the Bible also said, tell you this. Don't get mad at every word spoken against you. Because in your heart, you have also cursed others or said something wrong about others. So don't take heart to every word that's spoken against you. You understand? So you learn to get tougher skin. You learn it. You understand? Just imagine just looking at Judas' face every day. And sometimes you got to look at people's faces, though. Knowing they're against you, but still show them the same love that you'll show that person that don't talk about you. But do what you're supposed to do. Spread the gospel. No matter who's around you. If you're going to be a follower of Christ, like Herod was mixed with power and the truth. He knew the truth. He was like... I know John the Baptist is a good man. I know there's nothing wrong with him. But yet, he had Herod, John the Baptist detained in prison because John the Baptist disagreed with his lifestyle. Not that John the Baptist disagreed with anything, according to scripture. What, are you, what you're doing is unlawful. Now in the Old Testament, they said if your wife, if a woman was to die, having not children, or uh, the, the brother could, could marry her to keep the net lineage going. Now that is allowed. But I don't know what the case was. I don't know if he was still alive. He just wanted his brother's wife. Just a low down sum of gun, whatever he was. You know what I'm saying? If if, if uh, John the Baptist rebuked him for it, it was legit. That's all I'm going to say. And he threw him in jail. So he probably wanted to get rid of John the Baptist in a way. He said, when is sin produced? It's when a man is drawn away by his own lust. So think in regards to John the Baptist. This woman came here offering a proposition of, of 
a means to an end. I can just get rid of John the Baptist now. I ain't got to worry about him no more. So I'm going to use this. I didn't want to do it. But she asked for it and I made a promise. So I got to keep my promise. I'm a man of my word. Sometimes being a man of the word could be for some wrong things. Take Judas was a man of his word. I'm going to show you what Jesus is. I'm going to show you where he at. Sometimes you can be a man or a woman of your word for evil. Remember that. So be careful what you come out your mouth. You know, like take that statement. That is a broad statement to make. What he what he said. Whatever thou would, I would give it thee. You don't know what a person finna ask you. I ain't that stupid. Now I might say something. You know, I do anything for you within my means. Something I just can't do. <laughs> you understand? Some people take that and run with it, like she did. Oh, yeah, I can get rid of, because I'm a cheater and an adulterous whore. I can get rid of John the Baptist. Now you're, looking, now you're a, a cheater, adulterous whore, and murderer. Add that sin to sin. You understand? Because somebody ain't, somebody rebuked you and you, you and Herod. That's crazy. And people will attack you for that reason. Because you're telling them the truth. And they'll hate your guts for it. Do it anyway. Sometimes people, I'm, I'm not the nicest Christian you ever seen. I'm not. You know, uh, I drink now. And I know I, I do this one person. I ain't gonna say no name. When I drink and I say some things, and they be bold. And uh, oh, you wouldn't be saying if you weren't drinking. Hmm. You think so? There have been times when the spirit of the Lord came upon me, when I'm sober as I'm sober right now. And I've said some things without being under the influence of anything. Hey, without being under the influence of anything but the Holy Ghost. You know, he says, not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but what comes out. If the Spirit of the Lord dwells in you already, you understand? What's going to come out when you're under the influence? And if evil dwells in you already, what's going to come out when you're under the influence? Most people try to blame it on the alcohol or the drug or whatever they're taking. I wouldn't have did that if it wasn't for that. That's who you are. You just got to... Go ahead and convince yourself that the words you spoke or the actions you made under the influence are actions you wanted to take. You understand? Oh, I wouldn't have cheated on my wife if I wasn't under the influence. You wanted to cheat. You was drawn away by your own lust. And you gave in to it. So Akamar might have, I might have assisted you, may give you some liquid courage to do what you already wanted to do. Do you understand, people? The word does not lie. You are who you are. Become a new creation. He said, if that light is you in darkness, how great is that light? You understand? Think about how great is that darkness. Some people forsake darkness for light. You know what I'm saying? They call darkness light, I mean. <coughs> don't even realize what they do is evil. It is what it is. That's why you need God. That's why you need Him. Because you can't trust your own self. You don't supposed to trust yourself. I don't trust myself. I try to trust the Lord to have me do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? I got some weaknesses. And the best thing for me to do most times is stay my butt at home. And if I do my what I'm supposed to do as far as work wise and going the route that God wants me to take, I'm going to the highs. A lot of y'all need to start going to the highs. <laughs> You'll stay out of a lot of trouble. He said, no, some people can't sleep unless they have done wickedness. You know why a lot of people are up all night running the streets? They have to no good. I didn't say it. The scripture said, can't sleep. Unless they have caused someone to stumble. Unless they did some kind of dirt. Can't lay down and rest. 
unless they've done some type of evil. Unless they've torn somebody apart. You know what I'm saying? He said, the sleep of a righteous man is sweet. A laboring man is sweet. Let me not stop me misquoting the scripture on you. You know, a, a working man ain't got time. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I used to be that way. Guess what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I was up to no good most of the time. I get out of work, run around people and get drunk in public, public intoxication. Look for something to get into. Something I shouldn't be trying to look into get into anyway. But as I grew older, I, I changed. Why? Because when I was a child, I behaved as a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. I ain't got time for that. I'm no longer 23 no more. I'm 41 years old. Even though I don't consider that old, but wisdom, I'm trying to prolong life. I'm not trying to shorten my days. You understand? You shouldn't be either. But the thing is, let me tell you something. When it's your time, it's your time. It was John the Baptist's time. He said, he shall lower and I shall rise. So everything that happened was meant to happen. Sometimes death is meant to happen. You know, and don't blame God for every death. Sometimes death is meant to happen. Sometimes the, the, the grim reaper right there waiting. So sometimes you shorten your death. I mean, shorten your life. By doing foolishness, behaving foolishly. You understand? If death happened, let it come to you naturally. Don't look for it. Don't do stupid things. Don't be a thief, robbing folks and got to look over your shoulder all the time. Don't be a cheater, trying to, like, now you got to, every time you look at your phone, you're like, who did you? Oh, oh, now you got to lie. Oh, there ain't nobody. You know why I got a code on my phone? And I, uh, thumbprint thing because people love to, to, to look through stuff and if, if something happens to my phone you're going to have problems getting into that phones are too much expensive now to just leave it unlocked just like you at the front door <laughs> why you like the front door you must don't trust nobody I actually don't <laughs> I trust the Lord but I'm not going to leave my door unlocked for no one I don't want nobody coming in and out unannounced I don't want the devil just walking in Free invitation. You understand? He, he left the door open for me. I want you to knock on that book. <laughs> Who is it? What's going on? If my spirit is all right, let's sit on the... You can come on in. <laughs> my spirit, let's sit on the porch. But that's not always the case. I'm going to give you some blessings here. It's aside from this, but I got to talk some real talk too. But just remember everything I said before. Be careful who you're letting out. Be careful who you're letting out. And develop a standard for your home. What am I saying? All right, you married. You a man. She a woman. Don't let out every man in your house. Don't even let some male family members in your house. Hey, let's sit on the porch and talk. I know they'll be like, man, this man is so rude. Why don't you let me in this house? I'm not being rude. I'm overprotective. You understand? Sometimes when I go to some people's house, I don't even want to go in. I just meet the, the person I'm finna meet and we can talk outside. Because I got a respect thing going. You understand? Because I know what I'm telling you people. I've been there, done that. It's, it's dangerous out here. It's real dangerous, man. You know, sometimes it started to stop sin from happening. You got to stop sin from having an opportunity to reside in your residence. You know, we live in a world right now where people, women are bringing four other women into their household. We having a girls night out, your husband there. And then you tell your husband trying to sit in the back room and watch TV and chill and be out the way. Baby, why are you not here with us? You sure you want me out there? Because your, uh, your best friend got on some short dresses and stuff and revealing clothes, I'm going to have to do like this the whole time. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. I'm just saying what people don't want to say. 
I don't want to be out there with y'all. Let me be, consider this my free time. <laughs> you and your girlfriends, enjoy yourself. And some of y'all women, when your, when your husband, or your significant other, has company, get out the way. What you out there with mingling with men for? Get your butt back in the back room and put some decent clothes on. This is my house, I can wear what I want to wear. When you got company, dress respectably for your husband. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm going there today. Do it. When you got company over and you got young kids, what you looking at my mouth for? Go to the back. Get grown folk talking here. What? That's how I was raised. Grown folks and kids don't need to mingle. I'm not being real. That's our killer. <laughs> let women, parents, let their kids ride off with our killer into the sunset. A man that raps about scenes about nothing but sex. Seems like you're ready. You understand? Sexual, hypersexualized music. That's what he made. What you think they're gonna happen when he go, when they go around with him? What you think? His first love was Aaliyah. AJ ain't number the number. That was the name of her title of her, <laughs> her album. And guess who helped create it? R. Kelly. Sometimes there's signs everywhere. And you just don't want them. Pay attention to folks. Some people come over your house, your daughter needs to put some clothes on. You know what? You need to go. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, but bye. <laughs> you understand? It's simple. There's certain ways to protect your home. The devil comes to do what? Steal, destroy, lie, kill, cause confusion, and all this. Your house is your house for your family. I'm, yeah, how are strangers? If somebody needs a little help, help them. But be careful then, too. Don't let the devil in too easily. I just need a place to stay for a few days. You can let the devil in for a few days. It's going to take you two weeks to get them out. I'm <laughs> sorry. Holy crap. Been there, done that. It's like a vampire. In movies, you, you gotta invite the vampire in. He can't just come in. You mind if I come in? No. No. <laughs> you know, unwanted house guests are the, the hardest people to get rid of. It's their house now. They even cause it the laws of the land. You can't just kick people out. Unless you just, when the people don't care about the law, and you just put your hands on them and throw them out the door. And then they'll go tell you, send you to jail. You can't just kick somebody out of your house. You know? And people like, the people right here research stuff. You gotta give me a eviction notice before I get out of here. <laughs> But everybody ain't like that. I'm not. If I'm staying at somebody's house, they want me gone, I'm going to go. All you're going to do is cause confusion and strife. For some people, that's what they live for. That's what they live for. To bring your house down and crumble that mud. And it takes a little time. If you think about it, with the story of Herod, John the Baptist gave him a heads up. <coughs> Gave him a real heads up. Hey, you need to get rid of that woman. He didn't. Now he got to behead a friend. Somebody he listened to. Now he got to kill him. Because he let that woman in. She wasn't no good for the first to start with. When she was willing to sleep with you. And, and your brother. <laughs> That's who you want. Let me pause and I will continue, people. This, this is getting good, boy.